Alright, alright, alright. We're here. Okay. It's another Deaton Potato Talk. I'm Deet. This is Potato Man. Hello. So. It's been a long time coming. Ice Age coming. Um, so, uh, an idea I had for something to do over the summer uh, was to look at a specific series of comic books, primarily held by Jeff Johns, who is Potato Man. Who, what's your opinion on Jeff Johns? Jeff Johns? Yes. <laughs> you like the comic we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you laughing? <laughs> uh, no, I was crying. <laughs> um. F. Jones. He's a. Uh, yeah. He's a disappointing writer for me. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Yeah. Because I know he's capable of writing good and even at times great stories. But he's focused on trying to reinterpret previous like comics with his own style. Like he did with Three Jokers, Flashpoint Beyond, and um, Doomsday Clock. And even Infinite Crisis to a certain extent. Though I think Infinite Crisis is the best thing I've read from him. Uh... He wrote uh, the Justice League New 52 stuff, which was how I got into comics when I was like eight. Is I got it from the library, Justice League Origin. It was like the perfect jumping on point for little baby me. I was like, oh, it's Superman, it's Batman, it's Green Lantern, they're going on an adventure. Then I, I picked up from there and kept reading. And he also did an Aquaman run for a short period of time. It was really great. Uh, so I know he has some talent in him, and another comic we'll probably talk about if we ever do continue this is the DC Rebirth, which is also well done. But we're not today. We're not going to talk about one of his good comics. Uh, we're going to talk about the beginning of his downward spiral, the Flashpoint paradox. Potato, do you have anything to say about the Flashpoint Paradox? Why? <laughs> you know, you know at first, D and Potato Talk, you were t we were talking about a good comic series. We were talking about, since it, that was actually, now, now, we're, now we're talking about shit. So now we're going to be talking about fucking horse shit. Uh, yeah, uh, horse shit that people like. I have a certain nostalgia for it. But at the same time, when I was rereading it, I was like, I was enjoying it, and then it got to the last issue, and then like, it really falls off. It really, really falls. Off. It's bad. I think it, it, it. The one thing I like about the movie is it has the entire story. The fact that the this comic rely, relies so much on the tie-ins. Or it sh it shouldn't have been five issues. It should have been longer if they were going to flesh out the story. But at the same time, maybe adding more issues would have just made it, the comic worse. Uh. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what this is about. <laughs> in case people don't know. Because it's a very funny plot. But so... Flashpoint in general, or just the Dark Batman Dark Knight event? We'll talk. We're talking about both the co the the events comic and the Batman one. Okay. Because I think the Batman one's the best thing that has to do with uh, Flashpoint. Even though I have a lot of problems with the Batman comic, I think Flashpoint's a cool idea on paper. The idea of like this alternate universe where everything went wrong. Cyborg is the main superhero. Batman's well, Batman's cool. Batman's a doctor and uses guns. Uh, S Superman has anorexia. All stuff. I mean, the plot of the, the, there isn't really that much of a straightforward plot. The plot is Barry goes back in time, 
Uh, he changes the world to save his mom. He comes back to the present. Everything's changed. He meets Batman. He gets his powers back. They go to try to rescue Superman. It doesn't work. And then eventually Barry realizes that the world's fucked. And he goes back in time and restarts it and creates the new 52. That's the comic. That's the entire thing summarized. There's not much that deep going on in it. Bacon gay. I don't know. What do you think of like the main five issue comic? I don't like. Slow down a little. <laughs> I don't like Flashpoint. I I can't say this enough. I I I hate everything about it. I hate hate's mm-hmm. a strong word. Go but off. I I just. I don't know. Not good. I, I, I regret re- you I remember you said you like bought like whatever Flashpoint comic and I said you, you wasted your money. Yeah, I bought it for for this and then I was like, oh yeah, I guess so. Well to be fair it was like five bucks, but at the <laughs> same time I, you could you could you couldn't like you could have got like a Big Mac, dude. <laughs> I could've I could have gotten a Big Mac. You could have gotten a Big Mac and you would have been you would have gotten like a lot more joy. <laughs> True. True. Now I have a trade paperback for Flashpoint sitting in my fucking storage unit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of anything that's defensible. There's some interesting. No, there's not really. There's some fine ideas, but they're not really fleshed out. Really, I like Thomas Wayne as Batman, but that's more well done. We'll get to the Brian Azzarello comic. Um. Okay. Shit, once I didn't th- realize that once that we got to it, I would not have that much positive to say. I don't find because here's the thing about the Barry Savings mom. Barry's mom did, was was technically alive when they started writing the comic. They'd already brought her back. I think. I think that's how the story goes. But the origin of this was Jeff Johns had this idea for his Flash comic for the Flashpoint thing, and then. DC was like, we need to just completely reboot the DC universe. And so they re- they incorporated the, the reboot into the Flashpoint, and that's why it's it's only five issues. Is they had to shovel this in so they could get the new 52 ready. And a lot of people don't like the new 52. Uh, what are your thoughts on the new 52? New initiative? 52. I, 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 I completely forgot what fucking names or whatever um new 52 was the reboot that happened in 2011 where they just rebooted the entire universe and started from from scratch okay, in the okay, but they've, they've, they've done that like multiple times haven't they they've only done it twice they did it with okay, okay. on Infinite earths okay, and they okay. did it with new 52 and new 52 is the, the fucking dc rebirth shit right dc rebirth is like is different it, um, it's just it it brought okay. It changed the continuity. It brought the original Superman into the DC universe, and it brought Wally West into the New 52 DC universe. um, That's all it did. It's it's okay. It it was my, like, gateway into comics. Like, with Grant Morrison's action comics run and Scott Snyder's Batman, uh, which is a controversial comic. And like Just League International and all these comics, like for the first time, like I remember when Forever Evil and Trinity War happened, which were like these all these three comics, the Just League Dark, Just League of America, and Justice League, they all crossed over, and I was like, holy shit! Was, and then like it introduced me to John Constantine, and as a nine year old, John Constantine blew my mind. I was like, holy shit! He just smokes cigarettes and is an asshole. Cause that's the coolest character ever created. Uh, I don't know what the fuck happened with John Constantine during Flashpoint. Uh, but, it, like, if if you remember at the end of the comic where he's, he restarts the universe, they had the thing where they had the Vertigo universe, and they had Swamp Thing, and Animal Man, and Morpheus. And then it's, they got the Wildstorm universe, and it's got all the Wildstorm characters like Grifter and shit. And it's got the main DC universe. It was them trying to amalgamate all the shit. And I guess that's why, technically, the Sand. Well, I. I mean, the Sandman. I guess was, technically. 
And man, that was always canon with DC. That was always canon, right? But it was always separate. Now it's even time. more canon. Yeah. Which, I guess I should get into the main reason I even thought this would be an interesting thing to, to do. I was reading Batman Flashpoint, it occurred to me that something that's plaguing comics because of the whole shared universe thing, and this applies to like shared uh, movie universes too, is taking something from what is like legitimate like art, like solid work, like taking taking stuff from Watchmen and The Killing Joke or Sandman or Batman Long Halloween and then putting it into bullshit like Dark Knights and Flashpoint and Flashpoint Beyond. It was like taking characters who existed in their own isolated or versions of characters that exist in, in their own isolated works and like forcing them into uh, new works that are just like cheesy pop garbage. It it doesn't work and feels like kind of disrespectful. Yeah. Like the fact the fact that they brought the Watchmen characters into the DC universe. Or the fact that they brought the the Vertigo characters in the DC universe fully. It's to quote Alan Moore, the it's weird that Swamp Thing exists in the same universe as Superman. Yeah. It's it's a weird thing. Like I remember in um Chasing Amy, there's a character or not just in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back starring our favorite boy Kevin Smith. There are characters from Chasing Amy, which is like a real movie. It's like a real serious movie. It's like the best movie Kevin Smith's ever made. And I'm surprised he even made it. And uh, there are characters from that that show up and they get reduced to just these silly characters. When like the characters from Watchmen show up in like Justice League and shit, they get put into just becoming, oh, this is a this is another superhero in this universe. It's part of like the constant series of reboots and shit. That's why it's weird that they put Dream and Batman Dark Knights or uh, Dark Knights Metal because it's like now Dream is just part of the constant canon of DC. Mm-hmm. It, it takes away from stuff. You know, you know what I'm saying? No, I got you, I got you. Uh, and a lot of this is to blame. I blame James Je- uh, Jeff Johns for a lot of this. This is this is why we're we're doing this shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, fucking flashpoint. Um, the only interesting thing I can talk about with with flashpoint itself is the fucking. So in the movie, have you seen the flashpoint movie? I I I I really. I don't want to. You, 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 you really you, don't want to? I really don't want to watch. Yeah. It's not it's not good. I've you, seen it a lot though. You explain it to our dear uh two viewers, huh? Well in the uh, famous thing so Oni plays. Um they, Chris and Neil made a joke about he tried to watch that movie. And there's a scene where in Flashpoint where Barry tries to get his powers back and he gets struck by lightning and then gets charred alive. Uh, and the Batman saves him. And then in the movie, there's a couple scenes like there's like Green Lantern doing his shit and then there's like uh, Barry getting a flashback and then he's like, okay, I'm gonna go uh, just get, try it again, which is like ridiculous. Uh, in the comic, he literally there's nothing else. There's no scenes in between. He just literally uh, just goes and does it again, which people got mad at Chris O'Neill for po- making fun of it because it's like, oh, it's like the, char- the characters can't succeed every every time. It's like, no, the fact is he does it immediately after, and then the second time he immediately succeeds. Oh. <laughs> he immediately just, oh, I got my powers back. I'm the Flash now. Oh. It's like it's silly and the sloppy writing. Uh, but uh, we both don't really care care for the the main flashpoint comic. But 
what happens canonically in between when Barry gets struck by lightning and gets put in a coma is the Batman, Thomas Thomas Wayne. I was about to say Thomas Elliot, but that's not that's hush. That's a which is worse, hush or flashpoint? Um, Pat. Oh, I think I think I went through more agony going through hush. That also might yeah, be because I'm, I watched I the like movie. More. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not so fair. Stupid, that's, that's not fair. That's that, the <laughs> hush movie is very bad. That's like not not mention that. That's cheating. Yeah. Uh. I fucking hate that one page of where it's Batman talking to the Riddler and it's literally just word, word salad. Like, the entire page is... <laughs> just the, all the balloons are filling up, explaining every little thing. It's like, just... I like it when comics are able to get, like, straight to the point with their writing, but not be stupid about it. Uh, which is something, like, both Garth Ennis and Grant Morrison are easy at doing. Is that they'll write the necessary amount of ma- uh, information... In a l- as little amount of words as they can, but still keep the pace going. Though, like Groth- uh, Groth and his books are pretty are pretty wordy, but it's more because they're dialogue heavy. Um, but yeah, in between, like issues like two and three, or maybe it's three and four. There's this whole storyline with Thomas L- Thomas Wayne Batman. And I think it's it's run by Brian Azzarello. Potato, what do you think about Brian Azzarello? Um, yeah. Outside of his personal life. Yeah, he's, a, he's an individual. I like some of the stuff he made. Or, or whatever. He's hit or miss. I really like the Joker yep. book. Okay. I like his Flash stuff. Um... What are you about to say, Potato? Nothing, uh, nothing of importance. No, go ahead, say it. So, I, was, I was gonna say, I, I like his Joker book. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. I don't like what he wrote for the Batman Killing Joke movie. <laughs> I think he is never going to be forgiven for that. Uh, I think he's... I kind of like his Wonder Woman stuff, though I haven't read all of it. Uh, I think I think Batman Damned is stupid, and I like his Batman Master Race was kind of kind of fun. Uh, his personal life is a bit okay. So you know how it's fucking weird that Batman and Batgirl fucked in the Killing Joke movie. Yeah, like there's this weird age gap. Yeah, Brian Azzarello has a thing for eighteen and nineteen year old girls. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> Mm, 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 yeah. So like, that's that's how that's how you uh, that's how you explain the uh, the problems there. I see the, how that became a thing. It's technically it's not illegal, but it's kind of scummy. When <laughs> it's kind of scummy, I don't like it. Yeah, no. Personally, so the, the... but I think he's a decent writer. <laughs> Yeah, I think, and I think that I, I genuinely like the Batman Flashpoint May series, even for even how cheesy it is at times. Because uh, Thomas Wayne becoming Batman is an interesting thing, and I think Martha Wayne being the Joker is also really interesting. So the main plot of it is in between uh, the events of issues two and three. Uh, the Joker kidnaps uh, Judge Dents and Gilda Dents uh, kids, the twins and Batman has to come to terms with trying to find them and we get to go through all the uh, the Batman characters and how they've gone to this point and how like, kind of nihilistic the Flashpoint world is like we got Oracle as cat, like a paralyzed Catwoman um, Harley Quinn's a psych- psychopath called Yo Yo. Uh, there's a couple other ones because Thomas Wayne owns like a casino, and his, his 
basically is Alfred is um, the penguin, Oswald Cobb Cobblepot. And because the basic thing is uh, what happened when the world got changed is Bruce died in the alley as a kid and not Thomas and Martha Wayne. And that caused uh, Martha Wayne to snap and become the Joker. So there, she just becomes like a criminal mastermind. And that's kind of like my one of my critiques of the killing joke is that this guy became a criminal mastermind. Like, how, how the fuck does... Does Martha Wayne know how to, like, make bombs and shit? <laughs> like, like, really? Uh, what do you think of the comic, Potato? It's, it's cool. Hey. It's cool. I mean, it's obviously riffing on Frank Miller mm -hmm. a good amount. It's, it's the best thing off of Flash Planet. Um, yeah. Because I do genuinely think Thomas Wayne's an interesting character. Yeah. And I understand why they tried to stick with that version of Batman for a while. And because on the, the series called Earth 2, there was all, it also had like a Thomas Wayne Batman, though it's not the same as Flashpoint, of course. And then later they made Flashpoint Beyond, which is literally just about Thomas Wayne Batman. Yeah. And he'll come back in a comic we'll talk about called The Button. But. Or maybe we won't talk about it. I'll force Potato at gunpoint uh, to read all these shitty comic books. The, uh, we are the new top of the fourth wall. We are the new so I'll, the, you know, I'll get my revenge after we get through this flat flash plant bullshit. I'll, I'll find the shittiest magma. comic. But yeah, Magma. Listen to Matt. So here's the thing. I could, I could, I, I, you probably couldn't, but I could probably enjoy Magma. I could. I can, I can get with some of the stuff I've heard from Magma is kind of interesting. Magma is this prog rock band that has nothing to do with DC Comics, uh, but they're like it's inter it's interesting because they make their they've made albums entirely in this fake language. Yeah, with this alien race they came up with, right. and all these albums are in this like canon, kind of like King Gizzard. Yeah, like this is just this giant saga of this alien world. They're all French. Yeah. Where are the prog rock comics? That's, that's what Come on. Let's get on it. Or we'll get on it. I keep seeing people describe the comic uh, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, as a prog rock comic, and I don't believe them. That, that sounds uh, retarded. Let's see. It's it's Tom King's Supergirl book. So already in my mind, it's like, oh, Supergirl's going to have trauma, and she's going to cry, and she's going to try to kill herself. It's like she's gonna be miserable the entire time. At the end, she's gonna be like, maybe I don't have to be so miserable when it's the entire comic. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tom King's co they keep giving Tom King characters to like make mini series with, and then they it just becomes the same shit over and over again. What if superhero had PTSD? Not true. I mean, they all kind of do. What if superhero? Vietnam. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if there's that much we could talk about with DC Rebirth and the button if we try to do that like next week or anything. Mm -hmm. So you, we could add like an extra book to that to that list. Yeah, add it after we get through the shitty stuff. We should read something good, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to read. Killing joke. Oh. And this. Oh, okay. So here's the current list. Yeah, we're gonna read. We're gonna read Killing Joke, and then we're, we're gonna read fucking three Jokers. <laughs> I like the the first issue of three. Jokers. The first. The first one. The first issue. <laughs> <laughs> I like the first issue. Is, uh, I remember when that came out, and me and Don were like, "This is like amazing." And then the second issue came out, I was like, "This." Is less amazing. And then the third issue came out, and I was like, "Oh, this was a disappointment." Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, that was. They're like thick books, though. Because here's the this Flashpoint and the Flashpoint Batman miniseries is uh, then the Rebirth one shot, which is good. I like you. You'll probably enjoy the Rebirth one shot. 
and the Flash, the Batman, the Button, which is ten. That's five issues all together. Uh, Doomsday Clock. I bought Doomsday Clock. That's a big one. I don't know if you can get through right. your Doomsday Clock potato. Yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna get like, caught up on like Watchmen over we and gonna cry. You probably. And then Killing Joke and the Three Jokers. Three Joker. Which I've already. I've been. I've reread like Killing Joke twice already, so I'll be like caught up for that. And then, like Flashpoint Beyond, and that'd be like a quick, quick thing, quick. Well, actually, the, I think the Doomsday Clock issue would pro- thing would be we'd be doing that for a bit, uh, just because it's like it's a thick book, and my I think here's the thing: I think all of them are better than this comic than Flashpoint. I think Flashpoint is probably the worst of what we're we're going to deal with. Yeah, but it's because Flashpoint was a book he. Kinda had to fit into a bigger thing. Uh, with the new 52 and everything. Uh, there's... It's weird this become very iconic. And they've like tried to adapt it so many times. Because it's not good. There are characters like Elemental Woman. Who... Uh, who Jeff Johns just puts in here. Because he wanted... Like, hey, I should use Elemental Woman. I have a crush on Elemental Woman. And she serves no real purpose to the... To the plot. Actually, they cut her out in the movie. Kind of forgot she existed. Yeah, I read. I read Flashpoint. Then the, I like. I just went through it now. You read, and I was like, oh. <laughs> you just went through the entire comic. I, like, I, I, I read. I read. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I had already read it, right? I like. I like. Like, oh, that's Elemental Woman. When did she get there? Yeah. Yeah, it's like I don't know a lot of I don't know what what were they thinking? But the thing was that they were never supposed to keep the uh this universe around, but they kind of did. It's cuz in the convergence, which is a DC event they did that um one Ethan Van Skyver of Comicscape fame drew and that that brought the Flashpoint universe back, where uh, pre New Fifty Two Superman had to fight Fla- Flashpoint Wonder Woman. Uh, so all the, all the characters in this are so hollow. I'm gonna be honest. There's nothing. There's no real depth to anything. It's kind of, it just feels like a waste by the end of the comic. And I was just looking through this. There's so many like tie in. Time comics and stuff, and it like doesn't matter. At the end of the comic, the universe is pretty much destroyed. Destroyed by who, though? That will be revealed next week. Because actually, Jeff Jones kind of had a long plan, even going from when he did this. Because here's the thing: he loves Alan Moore a lot. There's actually a reference in Flashpoint to Watchmen, where. Uh, he steals a line from the comedian when Batman, uh, when they he they try to get Batman in their fi- their fake Justice League, the Resistance thing, and Batman's like, it's like this is all a joke. It's like they're like Justice League, this is all a joke. And it's like supposed to be like the comedian when he rejects the Crime Busters and Watchmen. There's only one Alan Moore reference, so <laughs> there's not too many. We're back. Uh, but his his previous comic event, Blackest Nights, that was based off of literally a throwaway line in Alan Moore's Green Arrow comics. I mean, he made a sequel to Watchmen. He made a sequel to Killing Joke. He brought the fucking Watchmen characters in the main Marvel team. Uh, 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 yeah. uh here's here's the two page spread. It's, Thinking about let me try to get it. I fucking hate uh, this le- very legal comic site. I use very very legal. It's called comics.legal.com. Exactly. Oh, this two page spread with Pandora in the middle, right? Because it has the main DC universe, and then it's got what's supposed to be the Vertigo universe, and has Constantine and 
I think that's Death. And then Swamp Thing. I don't know who the fuck the guy with red hair is. And the Animal Man. Which I don't think they were ever supposed to be defined in the early universe. And then the Wildstorm characters, which are all nonsense. Uh, and then at the end, it's like, the world has changed. Grifter is right next to the Justice League. I will say the art isn't that bad in this comic. The art's pretty well well done for the most part. Uh, I guess the only real piece of art in the entire comic that sticks with me is when Batman stabs uh, the Reverse Flash with the sword. That's, that's, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. But it feels like they it feels like they kind of wasted the character of it in the comic. But yeah, and I really like how I really like the ending of uh, the the Flashpoint Batman, where he's he's with uh, he's with the Joker, and he's like, "I have a I have a chance to save all this to make a better world," where Bruce is Batman. Uh, and then he's like, he doesn't know what to happen. And then he kind of just has to let his wife die. And it's it's a, it's way more emotionally impactful than anything in this. This just feels like bubble gum. Like trying to, I'm trying in my mind to go through this and like come up with something. I like the ending of the book where he goes to Batman and he gives him a letter, yeah. which we don't even know what's on the letter. What the fuck? What if what if he wrote like nothing on the letter? It says, "Dear son, blah blah blah." Well, dear son, it's, it's dear son. That's whack as hell, motherfucker. What the hell? Yeah, I I regret choosing choosing this. I could have we could have thrown another <laughs> other comics in here. Yeah. Just been like, have you read any other comics recently, Potato Man? Let's fill them. Let's fill them the last five minutes we got. Have I read any? <laughs> no. Uh, the, the what comic read mentioned? Uh, have you read any? Uh, no, I haven't. That's the thing. Recently. Yeah. yeah. I know you've been busy. Yeah, I've been busy. Like the last time I like sat down, um, read a comic. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I know. I know you. You recommend Flashpoint? No, no, no. That's because I had to. Like, yeah. Like no. You watch something of your own yeah, volition. Yeah, my own volition. Enjoyed it. Enjoy enjoyment. I can't say I was like finishing up the Sandman stuff because that was a while ago. I just um. I can. The also was fu- way a while ago at this point. Uh, I you know what we should talk about the we should talk about the uh, talk about the recent Deadpool runs. Talk about re- we should talk about modern Deadpool. I don't. <laughs> you will. I I was talk. I was showing a clip from the new Star Trek show to to Repti. I was just like, you will see everything you love raped and murdered in front of you. <laughs> basically. I've had to see Deadpool basically destroyed in my eye, in front of my eyes. Yes. So many times. Because Gary Dugan... So, Deadpool, I don't consider... I like... I've read... I've read almost every Deadpool comic under the sun before 2018. I've read a, a lot of Deadpool comics. Because I loved, I used to love that character. He used to be one of my favorite characters ever. And what happened was Ryan Reynolds happened in the fucking movie, and they turned Deadpool into a Reddit character. Um, um, I don't, I don't consider Deadpool to become Deadpool until Joe Kelly got a hold of Deadpool and he did a really great run. It was like, it was funny, but it was also dark. Something. Deadpool's a very dramatic character, and he works best when he's in a dramatic setting, or when he's dramatic in a funny setting. I think Gary Duggan's Deadpool run is one of my favorite, if not my favorite comic run of all time. It was just, like, really well done. It's huge. It's this huge run, but every issue is, like, super well done, and 
well drawn. It's got great action, and the character is so well developed. And it it gets very nihilistic towards the end, and he because they were basically taking Deadpool away from Gary Duggan so they can make him more like make him more like the movie. And he's like, no, I don't want to make him more like the movie. Why the fuck would I make him more like the movie? And then basically how, not to really spoil anything, how it ends is basically Deadpool kills himself. <laughs> he kills his mind and then resor- re- resorts back to um, the silly, goofy t-shirt Deadpool. And it's like such a, it's such a kind of dark and beautiful ending. And then like every single comic afterwards has been terrible. It's been terrible. The new comics are, I remember we did for movie night, we just watched, uh, no, we didn't watch. We read like a couple issues of the new Deadpool run. It was so bad. It was like him fighting Poison Ivy or something. Yeah. Now he's a non-binary Wait. boyfriend. <laughs> oh, shit. So bad. These, these, these people do not know how... There's, there's no good talented writers working in comics <laughs> anymore. I don't know. There isn't... Is it, this is something I wanted to get into maybe eventually. It's just like, I love comic books as like a medium, as an art form. I, I love them quite a bit. Uh, but this, this medium, this art form is dying because, because of shitty writers, basically. <laughs> Nobody knows how to utilize this art form in any way. The most popular comic right now is Boyfriends. <laughs> that's, that's so horrific. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's like the downfall of humanity. Oh, you know, what? at least it wasn't like the last... Bobby and Friends. Yeah, Actually, you know, Bobby and Friends. The last Bobby and co- Friends, you know. Oh, Bobby and Friends. They need to release Bobby and Friends on, on the racks. They need, need to make a compilation. Exactly. Yeah, no, Bo- no, Bobby and Friends is actually Kino. Exactly. Would you, if they made like a trade paperback that had all the Bobby and Friends uh, comics in it, would you I'd, buy it? Maybe. My. <laughs> I was thinking about this because I was thinking like maybe Stone. I was thinking maybe Stone Toss should just like make a big compendium. Of like I'd, a book I'd, of all his comics. I'd definitely buy it. like a stone tough. That'd be yeah. like interesting, like how they have like big star a uh, far side like collections that have all the far side yeah. comics. See so that that'd be good. Because they used to do that with like control not control up delete, Penny Arcade. I think they also did it with control up delete, but the the summer point. Speaking of it. You ever think about the fact that Control of Delete was a big giant ripoff of Penny Arcade, but no, no, nobody knows about Penny Arcade. Nobody remembers Penny Arcade, but people remember Control of Delete just because of the movie. Just because of Lost. Yeah. I would be in a fucked up world. It's a fucked up world. Yeah. And I've been, I've been getting back into the comics. Of, I mean, I'm been buying them like by the shit ton. Uh, not by the shit ton. I've been every time I get my paycheck, I was like, "Oh, I have an extra fifty bucks. I can buy some trade paperbacks. I can give me some Hellblazer yeah. or some Sin City." I didn't mean to get my hands on like the Sin City comic. Yeah, like, it's like good. A, uh, I, I, I have, I still don't have Batman, Batman Year One issue one. So, yeah, I guess it's the. I guess thing. I don't know. But I'm looking for. I got Daredevil Born Again. I need to sit yeah, down. That's pretty decent. Really. The Miller, this Miller run. Uh, yeah. So, let's see, I just sent you the two comics we'd be talking about next week. Hypothetically, if we could do yeah, this yeah. next week, uh, which are Rebirth, which I like a lot, but we'll, we'll get into to Rebirth. Actually, have you you said you read some of the Rebirth hey, com- comics? Yeah, I like started reading like Batman Rebirth. 
for like a point. I've read all of Batman Rebirth, and it's something. it's um, it's something all right. It's there's the thing is is there's parts of Batman Re- maybe we'll talk try to talk about it more. Is it keeps going up and down. I think the first half is kind of like perfect, and then around a couple issues after the war jokes and riddles, it gets into the storyline called the gift where booster gold goes back in time and, uh, and tries to, and he, he goes back in time and saves Batman's parents. And he creates a nightmare world. It's literally flashpoint again. He literally is Tom King doing flashpoint and it's worse. What happens is, uh, it opens with like how Jordan shooting himself with the, in the head with the, the ring. And then, like, by the end, like, by the end, Bruce Wayne becomes the Punisher and tries to kill <laughs> Booster Gold. Uh, but at the end, he he tries to kill Booster Gold as the Punisher. And I have I have it on trade paperback. I, it's like, oh, it's bad. And then the wedding thing happened. And then he kind of kind of fluctuated. And I think Tom. I think personally, because you know Tom King was part in the CIA. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, he was a CIA agent. I think he did something bad. I think he did something bad and he hates himself for it. Because every single comic he's written is like a character did something bad and then they hate themselves for it. <laughs> and then I don't know. Since since we don't have that much to talk about Flashpoint, let's talk about Tom King for five minutes. What do you think of, of Tom King? King? King probably should have killed himself a while ago. That's, that's how the Mr. Miracle comic goes. <laughs> it was with Mr. Miracle trying to kill himself. I fucking hate that Mr. Miracle comic so fucking much. That's like, that's like one that people love that I just don't like. Because it's like, so you know how the crow is this beautiful like rep- uh, peek into a guy's mind, to a guy's soul, to like comic books, and that was... This medium yeah. works. You know how that also has a like really solid put together story. Yeah. Too? Mr. Miracle has like the peak into Tom King's soul, but it doesn't have anything else worthwhile. It's so it's like very poorly written and poorly put together. Every time I've, I tried, to, I remember forcing myself reading it because a lot of it's him. He takes a bunch of stuff from Sam Man. And he takes a bunch of stuff from uh, Grant Morrison's Justice League run. And then he like tries, he's like, yeah, it's, I, I'm just doing it. It's Dark Side Is, which is Grant Morrison doing this. And he does all this Mr. Miracle stuff. Like, he even, like, uh, remember when Mr. Miracle showed up in Sandman? In Sandman? Did he, when Mr. Miracle showed up in Sandman? He showed up in one of the early things of Sandman. And, uh, Neil Gaiman wrote what is, like, the most iconic. Uh, Mr. Miracle scene, which is like, it's him having a nightmare going through his torture on Apocalypse, where he gets he's in the box and the box starts shrinking on it and on him. Is it early Sandman, I? Yeah, it's an early Sandman. It's like when uh, Morpheus goes to the Justice League, or just is it Justice League International? Do you not uh, remember this? No, 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 I do, I do. Oh shit! I thought Jeff Johns wrote the button. Tom King did. Okay, so we're gonna we'll get more into Tom King later <laughs> next time he goes. Shit. Mm. I was Joshua Williamson and Tom King. They were both writing Flash and Batman at the same time. And I think the story is by Jeff Jones. Okay, but it ties in the Doomsday Clock. It's it's they got the they got the Watchmen button. Mm, Watchmen. Yay, Watchmen. I love Watchmen. I love Watchmen. Do like you a... like Watchmen? Yes, I like Watchmen. Good. Good. Like the scene where Batman says, You ate my breakfast, and Rorschach says, Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll, uh. uh... This, this will be a fun summer. Uh, dude. But yeah, I guess we should try to get like another 
try to read like another book for for next week but to add on to the stuff. Okay. I'm trying to think what would be like a good companion. It'd be like a quick thing. What's something you like, Potato? Is this something I like? Yeah, maybe we could read an issue of The Sandman. Like a standalone <laughs> issue of The Sandman you really like. What's one issue of The Sandman I really like? I uh, also... There's a few, like, things. There's a few I, I think I like. Because a lot of them uh, stand on their own. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll look it up. Uh, there's, there's, uh, this fucking one, I remember, uh, wait, so you've read a little bit of Sandman, right? Yes. Okay. Are you, are you aware of the, the, this one story? It's like this guy, and he just, like, lives forever. No. Okay. Uh, um, I did read the, um, the Prez issue for Independence Day. You know what that one is? Uh, I think it's called Golden Boy. Is the name oh, of the story? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, that uh, one's really good. The boss Smiley and the big smile. Yes, yeah, yes I do. Smiley. Yeah, boss Smiley is the it. devil. Yeah, let's just let's talk about that. There we talk go. There we go. There we go. We'll oh. talk about that next time. Yeah. Anyway, uh, do we have any closing thoughts at all? But the same, with the, not the same thing with Flashpoint. I hate Flash. You hate Flashpoint. What would you give Flashpoint out of ten? I said a ten. I can't be above a five. Yeah, I think five or four for me. Yeah. Like maybe a, a four with a, with a heart. <laughs> <laughs> a four with a heart. Like I have nostalgic, I have nostalgic glasses with, with Flashpoint. But this, like, it really does just crumble at the end. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, I hope Craig decided to save our audio this time. I sure, I sure do. I sure do. Hey. I sure fucking do. Actually, maybe we could. Uh, if you read the Coyote Gospel, the uh, issue of the Animal Man. I have not. You should check that one out. That's the uh, fifth issue of Graham Morrison's Animal Man. I see. It's good. Yeah, I have that, a... That's actually perfect for what we're going to talk about, because that technically ties in the Doomsday Clock. Uh, or no, it doesn't tie in the Doomsday Clock. Grant Morrison, st- not Grant, uh, Jeff Johns stole from it and forced it into Doomsday Clock. <laughs> that's... Uh, oh, what's fucking... I fucking hate Doomsday Clock. Or, no, I don't hate Doomsday Clock, I just... It's frustrating. We'll talk about it. But uh, this has been Deet and Potato Man Talk. <laughs> I guess. Totally. The podcast. Podcast. The smudcast. Any any closing thoughts? I think you have to tell the friends, the children. Why did you post that? Because <laughs> it was in the, the chat. I saw it. I was like, what the fuck is this? I was scrolled out. Can we... Can we, can we... I put this at the end of the video. Yeah, I'll put it at the end of the video. It should yeah. be up right now. Be up right now. How we end it? This is this is actually uh, this is actually in the Flashpoint comic. It is. This is it's a drawing by Jim Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Jim Lee drew this. Yeah. Jim yeah. Lee's a great artist that just. Works on terrible comics, isn't he? Yeah. Hush, All Star Batman and Robin. Oh, <laughs> so there's a good one. Oh no! <laughs> Please you retard yourself. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna make you. You go through that. I already had to. I already had to. Yeah. yeah. I remember mm. the trade paperback of Ulster Batman and Robin doesn't have the last issue. Because it took a year for Frank Miller to make the last issue. Really, really. So cool. it just has like the first nine issues of the 10 issue series. Oh shit, we got the 50, 50 minutes. Holy shit. I wasn't expecting that. 
No. Well, anyway, it's been uh, Deep and Potato Man. And, uh... Good night. Good night. Good, good night. Good night and good morning. Ha ha. Flashpoint. Flashpoint.